Like damn, she in her mood. Like damn, she in her mood. Like damn, she in her mood. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the beautiful, legendary Monica. Monica recently said something that had a lot of her fans coming out to support her. She said that she feels she's the most forgotten as a major singer in the R&B game. Now, many of us know that this is impossible. Monica is very relevant. Monica is a legend. <laughs> she's a legend in music and R&B. And I've actually seen her perform in person. And I can tell you, she sounds exactly the same, just like her albums. She is the truth. She is a real singer, period. But when you are a music artist, you want to be recognized for your talent. You want to be recognized for your talent. You want you, you want recognition and everything like that. But we all know Monica. And Monica has a string of hits all on her own because we know that she sang The Boy Is Mine with Brandy, which is a legendary song. And, you know, when people bring up Brandy, they always bring up Monica. But Monica is Monica and Brandy is Brandy. And they're both two legends in music, in R&B music. And Monica was chosen to sing that song with Brandy because Monica was one of the biggest singers out during the 90s. During the 90s, early 2000s, Brandy and Monica two legendary women. It's just like when Whitney Houston and Faith Evans and uh, Kelly Price came together for a Heartbreak Hotel. Monica and Brandy teamed up because that's how it had to be. The song was perfect for both of these two legendary women to come on the track. Two stars in their own right. And Brandy and Monica later teamed up again for that song, It All Belongs to Me, To Me, Oh can't sing it exactly like them. So I want to share with you what Monica said. It says R&B singer Monica recently expressed her feelings on her place in the music industry, saying she feels that she's the most forgotten amongst the fellow R&B, her fellow R&B peers. During the final stop of the shop's uninterrupted live tour in Atlanta, which was published on Wednesday, the Atlanta native, alongside other guests, inclu including Qu Quavo Quavo and Lou Will Williams, talked about um, her career journey and why she feels she's the underdog. She says, I was able to really enjoy my career because I didn't have any expectations. I wasn't looking at stats. I wasn't worried about awards. I'm actually a person for all the records I've broken. I've really... I've never really won any awards. I'm really the most forgotten when you think about it. I'm pretty much the underdog, but I sit very comfortably in it because I can still go where I want to go, do what I want, live how I want. But when I say that I'm often forgotten, I was hosting the Soul Train Awards and I was nominated for five awards and three of my, for three of my songs in one category and I still lost. But I went out to eat and kicked it with my regular, you know, stuff you know after um she concluded i was not bothered because that's not what i do it for that that's really the point when i say i'm oftentimes you know i'm forgotten in these spaces monica was a major influence and a string presence during the 90s she also had a triumphant career with multiple songs on the billboard top 100 chart including before you walk out of my life don't take it personal just one of them days the boy is mine you know, selling 5 million records. And to me, Monica is still that chick. I mean, first of all, Monica looks the same as she did a decade ago. She looks amazing, okay? And she has a voice. She really, really, really can sing. She's very talented. And she had a lot of hits. And I feel like just because you don't have the hits you might have had a decade ago doesn't mean anything. I feel like there are certain artists who have made their mark in music, period, where they don't have anything to prove. We know what they can do. They are a legend to many of us, and they collaborate with new artists and stuff like that. I'm going to show an example more of what I'm talking about, how I've heard people say certain things about musicians that I find to be amazing to me, where they try to 
kind of not give them their flowers or keep comparing them to artists out today. There's a saying that people have their 15 minutes of fame, not because, you know, they're not talented, but because the industry is always looking for new talent. And then they try to do away with the greats from before and not promote them as much, even though they're still making music, they're still relevant and everything like that. So every artist that you're hyping up right now, within at least five or eight to 10 years, people are going to look at them a certain way because, oh, the next hot thing is out and all that. Good music never dies. Good artistry. And Monica is known simply by Monica, her first name, like Sade, like Brandy, like Whitney, like Mariah. You know, we know who they are. We know their music and we know her skills. So, you know, I know that it has to be upsetting, though, when you are making all this music we, <laughs> and you don't get any awards. But sometimes just because you don't win all the awards doesn't mean that you're not worthy. It doesn't mean you're not a good artist and, and all that other stuff. Just like with movies, you know, there are some movies that should have won an Oscar that people are still outraged to this day that it didn't win an Oscar. And it really was a good film. So just because you don't win certain awards doesn't mean that you're not that girl, you're less relevant, that your peers, I understand you want, you want your peers in the industry to recognize you and your talent and everything like that. And, um, but Monica is legendary. Monica is legendary. Of course, we know her first major hit song, just one of them days. Don't take it personal. I just want to be all alone when I think I'm you. Okay, and I also love her song. That's not, it's, this is not always talked about. This is when she first came out. Like this and like that. I'm na, 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 na. like this and like that. Check out that video. Check out that song, like this and like that. Okay. Also, we know I don't get down on the first night. That's when music had a lot more meaning. You know, she said, I don't get down on the first night. You know, I'm tempted, but I'm not like that. I'm not one of those type of girls. And her her man in the video was some nice eye candy. I remember seeing him in a lot of music videos because he's a dancer. So it's a really good song. It was a big hit. I remember seeing it all over the TV when I was little. One of her big hits, Angel of Mine. When I first saw you, I already knew there was something inside of you. Something I thought that I would never find. Angel of mine i mean who didn't love that she looks so beautiful in the video and that is a legendary r&b song again monica and brandy were paired up for this legendary song because no one else was right for it monica and brandy were the top young women in r&b during the 90s dominating legendary status now brandy there's always been comparisons it was the perfect team up and let me tell you something when this came out i remember it like it was yesterday i was little and um i remember when it they were showing the making of the video on mtv i believe and it was everything listen when this video came out it was the biggest song in the whole country. Everybody was watching the behind the, the uh, making of the video. And when the video came out, you could not escape this song. It was everything. They even performed it. I, I think they performed it at the MTV Music Awards. It was a big deal. I know that now we have YouTube that I'm on. You have streaming services. You have a lot more to help market you. You know, it's not uncommon to see certain artists with one billion views here on YouTube or on streaming services. Back when this video came out, they were on that level. And this song again, the boy is mine. 
nowadays i don't know you know seeing girls fight over a guy but it was it was a good song it was a good song and they look so beautiful in the song okay and they had makai pfeiffer in the video and he was a major actor during that time too so it, it was it was a good song a good video and legendary this is legendary and Brandy and Monica again teamed up not too long ago after the passing of Whitney Houston. And they did a little bit of a tribute to Whitney at the end of the video, the way Monica was singing. It all belongs to me. It all belongs to me. Okay, they teamed up. They looked so beautiful in that video, showing their vocal skills. Again, the tribute to Whitney at the end. But I'm going to say something that's not meant to be negative. It's just an observation from what I have read online from other people. And Monica said that she basically was singing for the joy of singing. So she wasn't looking at stats and stuff. She just wanted to, I, I assume, make music and make good music. So this is something, I don't know. I don't know how to put it into words, but she's fine with where her career has gone, where it has went, where it is. And people often compare a lot of a lot of people are always comparing every R&B singer to Beyonce because Beyonce is extremely, extremely successful. She's had longevity. And oftentimes there can be a comparison between Brandy and Monica. So what I'm about to say is not a diss to Monica. It's just an observation. You know, maybe she wanted it to get to a certain level but it didn't and something that i saw that might have put her in a box and maybe hurt her career a little bit is like with with k michelle when k michelle says i want to make music for the hood okay but you don't get to beyonce level just singing to hood people beyonce is an international star and usually going pop a little bit helps the career Okay, so Monica, one thing I used to see people say about Monica was that she's a sweet girl, but she likes to sort of embrace this hood image. This hood image that she didn't start off with when she came out. You know, she's had sort of the good girl image. She still sort of has the good girl image to me. She ain't never been in trouble like that. Um, no one can really say anything bad about Monica. You know, she has so many friends in the industry is not uncommon to see Monica hanging out with so many people that we see, you know, in the black community that stars and stuff like that and music. So, um, but she sort of did embrace the whole hood thing a little bit, a little bit, not at first, but it started coming out. Um, she also, she also was involved with C murder, C murder. I think that's master P's brother or something. He went to jail for something serious. I think he's still in jail and she's been fighting to get him out. He might be out of jail. I'm not sure, but it didn't really help her career to me being involved with a man like that. C murder, just his name alone, C murder. And not everyone liked it. I've I've read comments online, y'all. I'm not just saying this of women, black women who feel like this image was hurting Monica's career. This whole hood girl thing. And you're not really to us that type of girl. But then again, they don't know Monica like that. Monica from Atlanta and stuff. But, you know, and this whole trying to fight for C murder to be free and all this other stuff and stuff like that can can hurt a brand as far as giving you a certain image. And all of that. Is that always the case? No. But that was an observation. She had her music video every time the beat drops. And she had a bunch of hood men in there. It was a very street hood song type of song. And all that. I guess maybe she might have said maybe it's for the culture type of thing. And the thing is, she don't have to sing one type of music. You know, she does have Angel of Mine, which was a big hit. But then, you know, she did this later in her career. I just feel like stuff like this can have you boxed in, you know. And she has fans from all demographics. So maybe she wanted to do some different type of music, you know, for, you know, the hood people that like her music and stuff like that. And um, but and, and Beyonce did do that song. I need a soldier. 
that's gonna stand up for me only carry things if you know what i mean so beyonce has done that but overall her image has always been like the good girl type of thing and becoming an international singer and stuff like that so at the end of the day monica is monica and she's still making music she still looks the same and i don't think she should ever be written off in the history of music r&b music and she won't be if something would have happened to monica it would explode all over the black community and all of america but especially the black community and i said i wanted to give you some examples of how people try to write some people off in in the in the industry you know if they feel you're not relevant no more or you're 15 of fame 15 minutes is fa of fame is up and all this other stuff or we it's new artists out now I want to put y'all, uh, remind some people of some artists, right, real quick. I just want to show these four women as an example. Monica might not have won a lot of major awards, but she has made her mark in music. Just because she doesn't have a string of hits out today doesn't take away the hits that she has had that we still play and listen to. Monica has something called timeless music. And a lot of artists today do not have timeless music. Even artists that are considered some of the biggest artists don't have timeless music. Music that is remembered, music that gives you chills, music that you still will be playing 10, 20, 30, 50 years from now, music that can be played 100 years from now and still make people dance and say, well, who made this? Wow, this is really good. This sound like it could come out today. She has those hits. Brandy, I can't believe that I've gone on some pages and some people are acting like Brandy Oh, she used to be um, so big, this and that. I'm like, Brandy is a music legend known by her first name as well. A string of timeless classic hits, not just with R&B. Brandy was one of the first, one of the first. She was the first black Cinderella on TV that we ever saw. She was one of the first to get involved with CoverGirl. She had her own TV show as a teenager. She was on VH1 Divas, which was one of the biggest events you could go to to perform. The biggest women in music were invited to VH1 Divas. And they teamed up together to give performances with other legends. You had to be considered a legend or a future legend to even get a spot on that award show. Okay, Celine Dion, Tina Turner, okay, Shania Twain, Mariah Carey, Brandy, Cher, just to name a few. VH1 Divas was big when it was out. And Brandy was a part of it because she was beyond Brandy was the Beyonce of the 90s. So I don't need people acting like and I, I said I don't like to compare, but they often do it because some people believe that because Beyonce has dominated for so long, you know, on the on, you know, with the help of streaming services and YouTube and her fans, a good marketing team and all that, then all of a sudden the women before her aren't relevant no these women paved the way and we're gonna put some respect on their name i don't give a damn about numbers and even back in the 90s and in the, in the 2000s their numbers again streaming services weren't out you had to buy an album a cassette tape an album selling out shows which a lot of artists do today because the industry is not even the same these women were the big thing and are still relevant in music you know, so I hate when I see stuff like that. Yeah, Brandy is still making music, but you don't often get support sometimes from people in the industry because they feel like, oh, well, you had your time. So we're going to give it to the newest person out. And then people act like the new people out as somehow, oh, you're bigger than that. No, I don't think so. Absolutely not. Because if something happened to Brandy, it's going to be all over the news and the black community is going to be devastated. Okay. Aaliyah, now we know we lost Aaliyah in 2001. 
And even though Aaliyah was just 22, Aaliyah got more hits than some of your damn favorites out today. I'm talking stuff that's timeless, timeless hits. One in a million changed the music game because it was the first time that an R&B singer and hip hop music beats like what Timbaland was doing was meshed together. It, 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 they created a whole new sound in R&B music and hip hop and R&B. So even though Aaliyah passed away young and has sent shockwaves throughout the black community and the whole damn country, because it was everywhere on the news, we remember, Aaliyah accomplished a hell of a lot in her career, even though she passed away at 21. So she wasn't about to be a star, like some people say, because they say the same thing about Selena. Oh, Selena was about to be a star. Um, Selena was a megastar in her community, just like Aaliyah was a megastar in the black community and plenty of white people. Cause usually when they say white, they're talking about mainstream America. When they say you made it mainstream, they mean the majority white or other groups of races. All of them know who you are and follow you and like your music. Aaliyah was already a mega star in the black community. We all knew who she was and grew up with her music. So, you know, I've always hated when I heard though, she was a, she was about to be a bigger star than what she already was. She was already a big star, but she was about to be a mega star. Okay. And she's never forgotten. And she has influenced so many women in the industry and her legacy still lives today. Mariah Carey. It, y'all, when I hear people try not to give this woman her flowers, do you know that Mariah Carey has the most number one hits than any woman in music history? She's up there with Elvis and Michael Jackson and Madonna, Mariah Carey, but, but she actually has more hits than Madonna. She is the only woman with the most hits in history. She is the only woman who has had hits through every generation. Since she came out into 2003, she has a fan base of different ages who grew up listening to her. She wrote her songs. She sounds like her album. And anytime people wrote her off, she came back out like we belong together. Mariah Carey don't have to prove nothing because she's literally in history. She has some of the most beautiful legendary music of all time. And I find it incredible when some people try not to give that woman her flowers with everything that she has done in music. That cannot be debated. It just can't be. So it's like every time somebody takes a break making music, maybe five years, oh, they fell off. Oh, they this. Music never dies. Good artists never die. She don't have to put out music every damn year to prove herself. Her music speaks for itself, all of their music. And we still play and listen to their music to this day. Half the stuff out today can't even touch a lot of these women's music. And every, every time I go listen to some 90s music and I look in that comment section, I see nothing but the comments saying, why come the stuff out today ain't hitting like their music? It is just not. It ain't got that rhythm, that flavor, that soul, the lyrics, the beat, the video. You can't compare R&B today to 90s R&B. 90s R&B dominates and everybody knows it in early 2000s and the 80s too. But the 90s, 90s is the golden era of R&B music and the industry has tried to destroy R&B and make hip hop the number one music, which it is because it's so damn toxic on average. And these women were singing about, even the men singing about love, romance, and it was so good. Everybody loved R&B. And they didn't, the, someone in the industry didn't want it, especially these black women that was dominating it. So they tried to push it out and promote filth. They've been promoting filth that's why even even rappers, you can believe it or not, have been complaining like, I can't believe the rap artist that's out today, like like the way that is turned, you know. Even though it was somewhat toxic, even still in the 90s, but now anybody can get signed and they talk about some of the most disgusting things regarding women, especially. And it becomes a hit and all of that. And they push it 
And now you got all these other groups, everybody listening to it. R&B is making its comeback, but you can't you can't touch 90s R&B. And Monica is a part of that, you know, and these, you know, Monica's still making music, has collaborated with others. Brandy still making music, has collaborated with others. Aaliyah, rest in peace. She left us too soon. But her music has still been sampled and her legacy is still being kept alive as it should. Mariah Carey still makes music. I think she might have took a little bit of a break, but she don't have to make music if she don't ever want to. She has the most hits. Do you know how major it is to be able to say I have the most number one hits in in music history? You got to be making some good stuff for that to happen. And I ain't never heard nothing bad from Mariah in my life. All of them have made their their mark in music. There will never be another. There will never be another Monica. There will never be another Brandy. There will never be another Aaliyah. And there will never be another Mariah Carey. Okay. And to me, Monica is just getting better and better. I mean, this woman hasn't aged. She looks so good. Her makeup's on point. Her hair be on point. Her outfits be on point. She's still in shape. I don't know what her diet is. Her voice is still impeccable. So nobody sleep on Monica. You know, you need to support, support these artists. Just because you don't see them being promoted all over the place from the industry doesn't mean that the song isn't a hit. It shouldn't be a hit. Tony Braxton, I should have put her picture up here. She's still making music. Amazing music. And you have to uphold your legacies. You don't just throw them away. So Monica doesn't, uh, well, I think she said, like she said, she's fine with where she is in her career. She didn't, she knows she loves the to make music, the joy of making music. But, you know, of course, a lot of people, if you're making music, you want to win some of these awards. But if you don't, you don't. But it doesn't take away who she is and what she's done and what she means to people. And like I said, I've heard her sing. I've, I've seen her in person singing. And she is the truth. Amazing voice. So I just wanted to share this with you. I love music so much. This was a very fun video, too, to talk about all the ladies and stuff. Monica is not forgotten. And I saw so many people coming out saying, don't you dare say that, Monica. What are you talking about? You ain't forgotten nowhere. Okay. So thank you all for joining me. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell for all notifications so you know when I'm live and when I upload my videos. All right. So I will talk to you later. Bye.